Coalfields Water Supply Scheme is a project that involved the construction of a 565 kilometre long steel pipeline which pumped water all the way from the city of Perth on the west coast to the gold mines of Coolgardie and Kalgoorlie. Kalgoorlie has also been selected as an ICE 200 project in itself. The discovery of gold at these sites in the early 1890s led to the biggest gold rush since the 1850s. This resulted in an enormous population increase with thousands arriving at the gold fields. There was a significant lack of fresh water in this area as it was very, very dry and this resulted in poor sanitation and diseases such as typhoid with many deaths being recorded. The government was put under immense pressure to provide a reliable water source, not only for public health reasons, but also to assist the mining industry. Irish engineer Charles Yelverton O'Connor was consulted to solve this problem and came up with this ingenious idea. Work started in 1898 and took five years to complete. The pipeline was by far the longest water supply pipeline in the world and was the first to be built of steel. 77,000 tonnes of imported steel to be precise and it is still the world's longest steel water supply pipeline. The amount of steel used in construction was greater than any steel structure anywhere else in the world. The huge distance the pipe was required to travel was made even more difficult by the height the water had to be lifted. There was almost a 1300 feet rise from Perth on the west coast to the gold mines which were inland. For this reason, the scheme included two main reservoirs and eight pumping stations along the route, which ensured that water got from A to B. The pipes were made of 760 mm diameter steel, which ranged from 5 to 8 mm thickness, depending on the pressure within the pipes. Over the course of construction, O'Connor faced extreme criticism, including personal attacks from politicians and the press claiming that the project was far too ambitious and would be impossible to pull off. It was dubbed the Scheme of Madness. Unfortunately, O'Connor never saw his masterpiece reach completion as he committed suicide in 1902, one year before its completion. The complexity of projects that civil engineers tackle means that things don't always go to plan. Within four years of the start of the supply, pipe leaks and bursts were found along the route and this was caused by both internal and external pipe corrosion. And this became a growing problem, giving engineers headaches for years afterwards. In 1915, a vacuum deaeration system was developed. A vacuum deaeration system took air from, from the water, which resolved most of the internal corrosion problems. The two main objectives of this scheme were achieved upon completion. One of those was a reliable water supply for the public who were living there and the second was a water source for the mining industry itself. Because of this, the mines were able to expand and extend their operations into the coming decades. At the time of its opening, the scheme was regarded internationally as being the largest engineering undertaking of its time. The pipeline continues to serve the communities to this day and it's estimated that 60% of the pipeline now is in its original state. The route now boasts 20 pumping stations compared to the original eight. I wasn't 100% sure of what to expect when I embarked on a career in civil engineering. However, this industry has completely opened my eyes and showed me what a difference civil engineers can make to the lives of people on a daily basis. Civil engineers play a key role in the whole life cycle of a project from designing it, to constructing it, through to maintaining it. The civil engineering industry is extremely fast paced and each day of my career has been different from the last, with new challenges to overcome every time I come to work. I would recommend civil engineering as a career to anyone who has an interest in solving problems and finding solutions. A job in civil engineering can take you anywhere in the world and the opportunities are almost endless. The industry is changing all the time and is constantly on the lookout for fresh ideas. One of the most satisfying things for me is to watch something get designed and then built and then used by the public. But most of all, I would say civil engineering is extremely fun 